<laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, what's up, you guys? It is Ty. On today's episode of What the Fuck Even Is My Life, we're having a sister scandal. So hold on to your wig because I'm about to spill the tea. I really, I had to go get beer to loosen up for this one because I'm not ready for this and neither are you. <laughs> so today I'm telling you the story of my first and only one night stand. And yes, she did not know I was trans, but guess what? I was the one who was in for a big surprise this night. All right, so just strap it and get ready for this ride. So this took place about a year and a half ago. I was newly single and me and my boy Sam decided to go out to a gay club to watch a drag show. And this was my first time feeling like a young eligible bachelor. And I definitely wasn't going out with the intention of making anything happen or hooking up with anyone. But it was nice to just feel young and attractive and like I could. I was wearing my big boy boots that make me like a half an inch taller. And I had just gotten this nice new hat from PacSun. So I was feeling pretty good about myself. So me and Sam were at the club and we got a few drinks in us and we start dancing. And I go up to these two girls on the dance floor because it's pretty early in the night and there's not a lot of people out. And I'm like, let's just make friends. Let's talk to people. I definitely don't expect to, you know, pick up two girls who are dancing together at a gay club. So I'm just being friendly. Like that's not even on my mind. Making conversation, dancing, lip syncing along to the Lady Gaga that's playing. It's a gay club. And you know, they end up being really friendly and really cool. So we're all kind of hitting it off, just having a good time, enjoying ourselves as we do. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm single, I'm gonna flirt, I'm gonna do my thing. In my mind, one girl's really pretty and one girl's really approachable. So I started talking to the really approachable girl and she's not really feeling it. She's not having any of it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I can back off, like no problem. And you know, the night continues and we go on. But as we hang out and dance and drink more, the girl that I found more pretty starts kind of dropping some hints, making some moves. And I'm like, well, okay then. So I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Like I like attention and being flirted with and feeling like I'm attractive. <laughs> so that sort of stuff kind of continues. And then the drag show starts. And at this point, me and my buddy Sam had already separated from the other two girls. We had gone to get a drink or go to the bathroom or something. We come back down, we all gather around to watch the drag show. And I see those two girls across the dance floor. And immediately I make eye contact with, we'll call her Sally. I make eye contact with Sally and she waves at me real big and runs across the dance floor and comes over and like drags her friend over there. So they both come over to where Sam and I are. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like we'll all hang out. We'll watch the drag queens. It'll be fun. And we do. And as the night progresses, you know, she's, she's kind of giving me more signals and signs. She'll kind of like laugh and like put her head on my shoulder or like, you know, the musical star and she'll kind of dance with me. You know, just, just that kind of stuff where you can just kind of tell. And I'm like, holy shit, this is cool. Like I've never, <laughs> I've never experienced this. This is the kind of stuff you see in movies. Like I've never gone to a bar or a club and picked up a girl, like what is happening? <laughs> but as this is happening, Sally's friend is getting progressively annoyed with the whole situation. And I'm thinking like, all right, you know, maybe they wanted to have a girl's night. And now she's kind of mad because Sally's like flirting with me and like has found a guy. You know, I can understand that, but also let's just all have fun. So we watch the drag show and we're having a great time and we're like tipping the girls and cheering. And at this point I am already drunk, just getting more drunk. And Sally's friend continues to be very visibly uncomfortable with everything that's happening and finally just says, okay, I'm going home. And she straight up leaves. So it's me, my buddy Sam, and this girl, Sally. And you know, Sally doesn't seem too bothered by it. So then we aren't either, cause we don't know this girl. Uh, so we continue with our night. We finish up the drag show and close the place down. And then Sally invites us to go back and hang out at her apartment with her. And so we do. At this point, I'm kind of feeling a lot of things because on one hand, I'm like, holy shit, this is really cool. Like I've never, <laughs> I've never just picked up a girl. I guess it was more like she was picking me up. I've never been picked up by a girl. <laughs> but on the other hand, I knew that she didn't know I was trans. So I was <laughs> throughout the night just sort of consciously being like, okay, 
I'm not going to push anything to happen. I'm not going to try to sleep with this girl, but if she tries, you know, whatever happens kind of happens. And that, that was my drunk brain thinking those things. <sighs> Which, <laughs> You know how they say, like, if you listen to a certain song while you're studying and then listen to that same song while you're taking the test, you'll do the test better? That's why I've had a few beers tonight. Because, you know, maybe if I get back into that state of mind. <laughs> okay, so the three of us are back at Sally's place. We're having a good time, we're hanging out. So, like I said, I was very drunk and it's all kind of fuzzy, but at some point Sam leaves and goes to his car. So it's just me and Sally. And this is when I'm like, okay, shit. Like, I haven't told her I'm trans. And it seems like it's heading in a certain direction. And I'm not exactly trying to make it head in that direction. I kind of don't know if I even want it to head in that direction, but I'm drunk, so fuck it. Like, whatever happens, happens. And, uh, well, she's showing me around and she shows me her room. And she's like, oh, like, everyone said my bed is super hard, but like, I think it's really comfy. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, okay, here it is. Like, there's no denying. Like, that's, <laughs> like, I know what that means. <laughs> so I kind of follow her into her bed and, um, you know, things heat up. I'll just say this. Here's an observation that I have found. Women really don't care that much about dicks. Like, they're not that crazy about them as they like to act, for the most part. You know, some people really do just love a dick. But for the most part, what I've noticed is that they will, out of courtesy for their partner, sort of overplay their, you know, want for that. So pretty early on, I could tell that that wasn't a huge concern for her, which was great because in my mind, I'm thinking she's gonna go for my dick and there's not gonna be a fucking dick. Like, what am I gonna do? I haven't told her I'm trans and I'm trans and we're already here and this is happening and what am I doing and why am I doing this and I should stop and how do I stop and like, I wanna leave. Um, but it ended up being fine. And I was like, okay, hey, I'll just give her a good night that she'll remember and, and be enjoyed with. And guess what? For most girls, if they don't have to put some dude's sweaty dick in their mouth, it's like not the end of the world for them. So that's kind of where we were. So, you know, things are happening and then we hear the door open. The front door to her apartment opens and we hear voices from the other room. And oh my God, you would have thought she just saw a ghost. She just freezes and turns white and she's like, my roommates are home, my roommates are home. And I'm like, Okay, what, what do you want me to do? She is just freaking out, like scrambling, putting on her clothes and like going completely manic. And I'm thinking like, okay, maybe she's just like really religious or something. And like, these are roommates that she met in her youth group and she doesn't want to seem like she's doing anything wrong. Or maybe she's just shy and embarrassed and doesn't want to seem like she's just hooking up with some random dude. You know, I can, I can get that. But she's like really over the top to the point where she like goes over to the door and she's listening to see whenever she can hear her roommates stop talking like when they go back in her room. And I'm still drunk and I'm like, okay, like we can be sneaky. Like I don't know what the fuck is going on, but sure, this is fine. She kind of cracks the door and she looks out. We can see her kitchen. My phone and my wallet are on the kitchen counter. No one's out there at this point. So she's like, okay, okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna get your stuff and, and head out the front door. And I'm like, Okay, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> this is perfect. Like, I don't, <laughs> sounds like the ideal situation where I don't have to take my pants down or anything and I can just leave, sounds great. So we're walking out all sneaky-like and I'm reaching for my stuff and I get it and I hear from this way, um, you're not Trevin. And me and her both turn around. It's her roommate. Her fucking roommate, keep in mind this is like three in the morning, her roommate is watering their plants. <laughs> so that's why it was so quiet. She's like in this living room area. It was kind of behind this wall. So she was out of sight from where we were when we were looking out the bedroom. And she's just like looking at me and I'm like, okay, who the fuck's Trevin? But I'm not really concerned with that because I'm putting my stuff in my pockets and I'm leaving. Sally starts saying like, oh no, it's not what it looks like. He was just taking me home. Like I didn't have a ride and I went out and he was just dropping me off. 
and he's leaving. And I was like, yeah, like I'm leaving. And her roommate goes, so you know she has a boyfriend, right? And in that moment, Ty knew he had fucked up. No, <laughs> but seriously, for the next 30 seconds, I was just stone cold sober. I went from being literally hammered to I could do anything right now. I could do my fucking taxes right now, right here in front of you. <laughs> and I get my stuff and I'm like, all right, it's been a good night. I'm going to leave. And I head out the front door as I'm walking away in her fucking labyrinth of an apartment building. I hear her and her roommate getting louder and louder and I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Fucking Trevor's gonna come and I don't wanna be thrown off one of these balconies. <laughs> but there's just hallways and I can't find the elevator and I'm like, oh my God, every time I hear a noise, a door, anything, I'm like, God, it's them, it's him. They're gonna make me stay here. The boyfriend's gonna come. Like, shit's gonna get bad. I'm too drunk to fight right now. <laughs> really not great. She had a fucking boyfriend. Finally, I find the service stairs, sprint my ass down those, get out the front door. Sam is there with the car started. I jump in the passenger seat. I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's get out of here. And he does. And we head home. But that is not the end of our story. So I wake up the next morning, as you do after a night out. <gasps> feeling like, you know, some fucking corpse just rising out of my tomb. I go out to get water in the kitchen and Sam's out there and he's like, dude, last night was crazy. And I'm like, where am I? Who am I? What year is it? What? What? And he starts like relaying the events of last night and it's all like flashing back in my mind. And I'm like, oh my God, I went to this girl's house. She had a fucking boyfriend and I ran out and like her roommate and all this shit. And then <laughs> I go back to my room and I see the evidence, you know, my clothes in a trail towards the bed where I had taken them off while I was drunkenly trying to get, get to sleep. And I'm looking around and I'm like, where's my hat? My brand new motherfucking hat. My $35 rip and dip hat. I left my fucking hat at her house. And I'm just thinking about everything, feeling like such an asshole, like, man, I can't believe I let it go that far without telling her that I'm trans for my own safety, out of respect for her. I can't believe she had a fucking boyfriend. I can't believe I left my hat at her house. <laughs> like, never again. Never doing that again. So it's like two weeks later and I'm back at that club and I excuse myself from my friends to go use the restroom. And as I'm walking up to the bathrooms, I see a girl waiting outside. And as I get closer, I start to realize that just might be the girl with the boyfriend in the hat. That could be her. I was really drunk that night, but I'm pretty sure that's her. So as I'm walking up, you know, she notices me looking at her and I give her one of these, you know, like awkward, hi, hey that kind of thing. And she looks at me like, like, what the fuck? Who the fuck are you? So I'm thinking, okay, that's not her. <laughs> Good deal. Crisis averted. Must not be her. Someone else. So I open the door to the little boy's room and I shit you not. I shittn't you. As I'm walking in, out walks a guy in my fucking hat. He's wearing my brand new motherfucking rip and dip hat. And I just, I just freeze. I mean, my mouth is open and I'm just looking at him. And I know he has to know that I'm staring at him. Looking back now, he probably thought I was just hitting on him. It's a gay club. And I just watch him walk past me and out the door. And as I watch him go out the door, I'm looking back from him to her, him to her. And she's looking at me and him and me and him. And we both kind of look at each other Neither of us knew what the fuck to do. And he walks up to her and they walk away together. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Trevin. So as I'm peeing, I'm thinking about everything that happened, relaying it in my mind. I hook up with this girl. Turns out she has a boyfriend. I leave my hat at her house. And in order to hide the evidence, she gives the hat to her boyfriend. Like how fucked up? Like who? I'm sorry, excuse me? So I'm thinking about how just wrong every bit of this is while I'm in the restroom. So I'm kind of thinking like, maybe I should just stay out of it, but I'm already in it. He's wearing my fucking hat. 
<laughs> so I'm like, okay, no, this is too fucked up. Like I gotta say something. And I leave the restroom and I'm looking around, trying to find him or her, you know, both of them, so that I can just explain what's going on. I do a sweep of the whole club and I can't find either of them. So they must, <laughs> she probably beeline for the door. And I haven't seen either of them since. And that is my first and only ever one night stand. I felt pretty cool at the time and then pretty not cool immediately after. So don't do as I do, do as I say. If you're ever going to get in a sexual situation with a person, I would recommend disclosing, you know, your trans identity as soon as possible out of safety for yourself, if nothing else. So that's my nightmare hookup story. As bad as I felt about not telling her I was trans, I think she was keeping a much bigger, more important secret from me. <laughs> so I actually didn't end up feeling that bad. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope you learn from my mistakes and do better for yourselves. As always, have a wonderful day. Follow me on all the social medias and I will talk to you soon. Bye.